Guys, um, just a quick update. Um, I've since upgraded the motherboard, still doing PCI pass through with Linux host Linux guests. So I've now upgraded to a TB250 BTC BioStar motherboard and running 7 GPUs, that's um, uh, 6 RX 580s and the old 1080Ti EVGA. Um, this is only supposed to support 6 GPUs, but you can see this thing here. This manages to get four GPUs in one slot, and it works well. I've just got two in there at the moment, but I've tested four, and it still works with four, and it also works with PCI pass-through into the virtual machines. And the CPU at the moment is a uh, uh, i7-7700K. I was running the Pentium G4600, and this also works fine with PCI pass-through. I, uh, I need to emphasize that this worked fine, but I've just since upgraded. All of these GPUs are running in PCI pass-through. So we have the AMD ones, you can see the AMD virtual machine. I'm using Radeon Open Compute Linux. Um, so we have all of these different PCI devices and they're all AMD and they're all working for the virtual machine. And then we have just assigned it 1.8 gig of RAM, uh, four CPUs, so that's two cores, two threads. And this is working fine. It doesn't even need that much RAM, but I just give it a bit of headroom. And you can see here it's mining um, ETH with Claymore. So each GPU is getting over 29 megahash a second. So these are BIOS modded. I BIOS modded them on the bare metal first, and then I put them into the virtual machine. And obviously the BIOS mod, because it's the BIOS, it retains those settings. Um, three of these GPUs are the Asus. Um, dual RX 580 4GB and three of them are Red Dragon RX 580 8GB. Now I've been manually BIOS, BIOS modding so I know I can get the Red Dragons up to 30 mega hash plus but I'm happy with this you know 29.9 on, on the Red Dragons and 21.3 around about on the Asus ones and then we have over here we can, we can check the Radeon Open Compute System Management Interface and that's the kind of clocks that I'm running them at at the moment. You can see there we're getting average power around 100 watts. I can optimize that, you know, I can reduce the clocks. I can reduce the, uh, the, the core clock even more, sacrifice a tiny bit of um, hash rate, and that would bring the average power down. I can also edit the BIOS, but I'm just leaving it for now because, you know, it's good. It works. Then we have the 1080 Ti. Again, this is through the virtual machine, which I've shown in my other videos. Um, so we have NVIDIA there, pass through. Less than a gig of RAM given to it. It can get away with probably 500 to just give it swap space, but give it one CPU, host pass through, gives it good performance. And you can see here, Equihash, we're getting an average um, 767, almost 768 sols a second. Yeah, that's pretty decent. And this is running headless now, so if we look at um, NVIDIA system management interface, there's only one process running on the whole GPU, which is, you know, uh, DS10 minor ZM, and that's using 573. I've put the power limit on 300 just to, you know, give it full whack, 100%. Um, and I'm using the driver version 390. I was getting better performance, up to se up to 785 sols a second on, on an older version, but, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, I can probably roll back to that if I need to. And uh, also, mining on the CPU on a couple of cores, so this is Crypto Knight, just on two of the cores, and um, that's 175 hashes a second, peaking average, you know, 170, um, and again, so mining on two of those cores, virtual machines, and because it's Intel, it makes it easier to pass through the GPUs such as NVIDIA and AMD, because we can just dis completely disable the AMD and NVIDIA drivers on the host, and just use Intel HD graphics, which I'm using for the display and for you know basic Linux games, and it works. It works perfect. You can see here if we run um, if we run Zero AD game, which is like a, a great game. It's open source and it's like Age of Empires. See how quick it starts up. And bear in mind I'm, I'm mining on two of these CPU cores. So this is Intel HD now, and getting great frame yeah, rate. Rough, you know, this game. It's really addictive, just like Age of, Age of Empires. Yeah. There's no problems running these games. So the GPUs are free to mine. And we can just quit this. Yeah. 
So yeah, um, the way to run the NVIDIA headless um, is first to basically, I mean, I'm, I'm using a, a dummy plug here, one of these things. You don't need to use that, you can use a little hack, but I, I just like to prefer to use the dummy plug because it just works, it costs a couple of pound, that's about it. But you want to, um, so I have this little script. So first, this first line, X, colon one, this ampersand forks X to the background, so first you need to run X to mess with the NVIDIA drivers to begin with. Then you can set the clock speed, um, the memory speed, and the fan speed, and then give an output of the, uh, of the results. So that's the first thing to do, and then X will be running in the background. Um, by default, um, NVIDIA will run a persistence daemon, which will quit when you quit X. So what you need to do is um, kill that, and or change the settings. And um, while X is running in the background, you run um, this command. So NVIDIA persistence D, the persistence daemon, and make sure persistence mode is enabled because by default it's no persistence. And then you can kill X. So you can you know go into HTOP and just when X is running F9 and give it the sig kill. And that would retain the um, clock speeds and the fan speeds, so you can mine headless without X. But you have to you have to invoke X first. That's the thing with NVIDIA. With AMD, you don't need to do that. With AMD, you can completely mine headless. You don't need to invoke X. You can just run everything from Rock SMI. You know, you can change the fans there. You can set the different uh, power play settings and things. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty good as well. So yeah, that's about it. And this is this is mining great. It's a great setup. And uh, TB250 BTC. It's not the Pro version or anything. And this is a six GPU version with seven GPUs in it. I've tested it with eight GPUs. Maybe it can handle nine or, or ten, but I know it can definitely handle eight. And that's all with PCI pass through. So yeah, highly recommend this board. It's gone up in price recently, but you know it's, it's still highly recommended.